One of the fascinating and liberating things about building for the Jewish community is that there isn't a typology. There is no religious typology in the Jewish faith. So there's no spires, there are no domes, no stained glass windows. These buildings really are basic shelters. They're places for the community to gather. So the form of the buildings, you know they're quite filmy, they're quite linear. And the idea really behind that is to make them very understandable. To make them so that, you know, when you're in a distressed state, you know, if you know, that actually you have a kind of an intuitive understanding of how to pass through these buildings. The prayer hall floor is at a slight slope, so there's a constant orientation to really guide that flow of people through and then up into the sanctuary. The relationship between the landscape and the building is absolutely fundamental. When the prayer hall doors fly open after you've said the prayers and you're moving out into the landscape, that frame view is incredibly important and it gives you a kind of sense of tranquility, a sense of being connected in nature at the time that you really need to be. The prayer halls themselves are made from rammed earth. So this is a, an ancient technology. So we use soil from the site, compacted in formwork, rammed down and made into these great blocks here. So you can see the kind of, you know, the, 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 the earth that's outside, that's around you, that the body is buried in, is the same earth that the buildings are made from. For the Jewish community attending at this building, I think it's a place of serenity. Everything is pleasing to the eye, and I, I hope and feel that it will bring comfort to the people who, who attend. This is a, one of the principal cemeteries of the United Synagogue, serving a wide area of northwest London and beyond. The cemetery was founded in 1947, two decades before the establishment of a Jewish community within the area. The design of the new cemetery has made use of natural features and materials, landscaping with an environmentally sensitive approach. This includes the creative use of a range of flora, fauna and water features. In addition, the site has dedicated memorials remembering those who died in the Holocaust. On top, Bushy New Cemetery has a beauty and dignity that provides a fitting resting place for the community's loved ones. However, there are a few resting in peace who should be noted for their offering and dedication. From musicians, entertainers, scientists and entrepreneurs. Joe Loss, born the 22nd of June 1909, the youngest son of a Russian immigrant, he was born in London as Joshua Alexander Loss. Having studied violin at the Trinity College at the London School of Music, he put aside any thoughts of a classical career wanting to lead a band. Already as a teenager, he formed his first band at the same time making a living accompanying silent films in the local cinemas. In 1930, he formed his first professional band and continued to lead his band until 1990 without a break. In 1933, he made his first broadcast on the BBC. His recording career began the same year featuring vocal talents such as Vera Lynn and Chick Henderson. During the war, he took his band to France in 1940 to play for the BEF and he always took time off from his commercial engagements to entertain the troops. After the war and almost up to his death, the band made numerous recordings, appearances on radio and TV and in theatres and ballrooms all over Britain, 14 world cruises on the Queen Elizabeth II. They played at two royal weddings and at royal functions at Buckingham Palace, Windsor Castle and St James Palace, as well as Joe Loss and his orchestra was the first Western dance band to perform in the People's Republic of China. Finally, Joe Loss was awarded the Order of the British Empire in 1978 for his services to music. January the 31st. That's the date he's chosen for his retirement, neatly wrapping up six decades devoted to his music. And he's rather tickled that after all this time, he's back in the charts, courtesy of the Jive Bunny mixes. I do. In front of that band, to me, that floor there for dancing, unless we play concerts. In 1989, Joe Loss became too ill to travel, and in 1990 he entrusted the leadership to his longest serving band member. Sadly, Joe Loss passed away the 6th of June 1990, aged 80 years, rest in peace. 
Throughout the cemetery, one can find a variety of tombstones and memorials, each uniquely crafted to honor and remember those laid to rest. Bushy Jewish Cemetery also contains specific sections designated for different Jewish denominations, allowing for the burial practices and customs of different Jewish communities to be respected and observed. Al Coogan, born the 19th of May 1932 in Whitechapel, London. Her father's family, the Kogins, arrived in Britain from Russia, while her mother's family were refugees from Romania. Kogan's parents, Mark and Faye Kogan, had another daughter, the actress Sandra Karen, who went on to play Mumsy in The Crystal Maze, and one son, Ivor Kogan. Known as the girl with the giggle in her voice, she began performing as a child, auditioning for bandleader Ted Heath. She was signed as a recording artist for HMV Records while still in her teens, releasing her first record in 1952. Shortly afterwards, she became the resident singer on the BBC radio show, Take It From Here, and followed up with a string of hits, including... She was also well known for her outrageously huge dresses and her celebrity lifestyle, with her London apartment becoming a meeting place for fellow show business icons to relax away from the eyes of the public and media. She was particularly close to the Beatles, and after the music business changed direction in the early 1960s, she recorded many successful interpretations of their songs, including... In 1991, interest was revived in her career after the publication of the novel Alma Kogan by Gordon Byrne, which involved a hypothetical plot based on a reclusive Alma who had survived her illness but withdrawn from public life. Sadly, she died of ovarian cancer at London's Middlesex Hospital on the 26th of October 1966 at the age of 34. Rest in peace, Alma Kogan. The cemetery is not only a place for mourning and remembrance, but also a testament to the Jewish community's resilience and endurance throughout history. Coupled with, it serves as a living record of the contributions made by generations of Jewish families in the local community and beyond. Born Frank Abelson in Liverpool, England, on the 3rd of February 1928, also known as Frankie Vaughan. His name Vaughan was adopted from his grandmother, who would say, my number one grandson, which sounded like Vaughan in her Russian accent. His career began in the late 1940s doing song and dance acts. He began recording in the 1950s singing traditional pop music. His trademark song was, give me the moonlight, give me the girl. Give me the moonlight, give me the girl. Many of his recordings were covers from singers here in the United States. Laverne Baker, Perry Como, Jimmy Rogers, and Gene McDaniels. During his lifetime, he released more than 80 recordings. Furthermore, in 1960, he went to the United States to make the movie Let's Make Love with Marilyn Monroe. Although he appeared in many other movies, none became chart hits in the United States. However, Vaughan was awarded British Order of the Empire in 1965. Also, Vaughan was awarded the British Order of Chivalry for his generous contribution towards the National Association of Boys Clubs. Sadly, Frankie Vaughan died at his home on the 17th of September 1999 from heart failure, aged 71. Rest in peace, Frank Vaughan. Finally, within these fine, beautiful grounds are those who have contributed in more than one way or another. Individuals such as John Harris, 
founder chair of Alba Group PLC, a portfolio of brands including Alba, Goodmans, Grundig, Pulse and Bush, who died aged 88. Sir Ernst Boris Chain was a German-born British biochemist, best known for being a co-recipient of the Nobel Prize in Physiology or Medicine for his work on penicillin. Finally, following the death of Stalin in 1953, Hochhauser was the first impresario to organize tours of the West by Soviet musicians and introduced audiences to David Oistrakh, Mstislav Rostropovich, Emil Gilels, Sviatoslav Richter, Gennady Rozdestvensky and Dmitry Shostakovich. <laughs>